Welcome back once again. Today I'm going to show you how to make antiseptic shower gel. Someone will ask, how can you tell it's antiseptic? It will be antiseptic depending on the type of ingredient you use to make the product. Let's go over the ingredients of antiseptic shower gel. I'm going to use sodium benzoate, which is preservative. SLS, which is rice powder. Prozylino, or what they normally call the market. DCMS or something, but it's PCMX. This is sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. This is honey, vitamin E, glycerin, STPP, pearl, nitrosol. Citric acid is always. Uh, an option after you test for the pH and you realize either it is too alkaline, then you have to add citric acid to reduce the pH of your shower gel. So, if I don't need that, I will, I will use it. And then this is color. So, these are the ingredients that I'm going to use first. I have to make the nitrosol first, but nitrosol normally, if you don't do it well, it will turn lumpy. So, I normally use my hand whisker to whisk. The nitrosol powder so that I don't get lumps in my in my production For me, what I do to the nitrosol powder is that, you know, if you don't do it well, it gets lumpy. And, you know, stirring for that long time, I me, mean, I don't have the strength. So I always use my hand blender to do it. And a few minutes, less than one minute, you are done mixing it. So this is what I do. So I'll show you the, the video, how I mix it. It will be, I will just add it to this video. So this is my nitrosol powder. I've already mixed it. I use nitrosol powder. I use 60 ml, 60 grams of nitrosol powder to make it. And I've also mixed everything with water. Everything. So this is my sodium base with. I've mixed it with water. This is my SLS. I've also mixed it with water. This is my STPP. I've also mixed it with water. This is Corozileno. I've mixed it with water. You know, normally Corozile is not mixed well with water. Normally, you either use phenol or alcohol to mix it. But I don't need phenol or alcohol in my video or in my shower gel. So, I mix it with water. I use ordinary cold water to mix it. So, not all of it. I smell so, so I'll just sieve it and then melt. Take time and melt the rest later. I also have my bicarbonate of soda, which is baking soda. I've also mixed it with water. So all the powders, I've already mixed them with water. So once I start, all I do is just pour the things inside, and that's all. The Quantity of ingredients will be in the description box below. So now let's start. I will start with my SLS. As you can see, it is warm, so I will just pour it and stir. Why the need for antiseptic shower gel or body wash? Because it is effective at killing germs while cleaning the dirt, the excess oil odor sweat and makeup from your skin many antibacterial body washes such as what we are watching continue to protect your skin for hours after washing and also help the fight against illness and infection 
This shower gel can also help inhibit body odor that can result when germs naturally multiply on your skin. So as you can see, antiseptic shower gels or body wash is very important in our daily life. This is my sodium. Oh, this is my sodium benzoate. So I'll add preservative. This is STPP. Now there's a lot of. Uh, lots of this thing in it, particles in it. So, this is PCMX. When you add one ingredient, make sure you mix very well. You mix it very thoroughly to incorporate it into the other, other mixture before you continue. No. This is 15. 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 This is like 10 ml. This is all I have in the house. This is my pill. I'm going to use 40 ml. So 30 and then 10. More than the ten, a little bit more, but and then this is honey. Forty or forty-five m. I'm adding my perfume, lavender. The quantity of perfume always depends on the person. For this one especially, the person says she was very specific that she wants a very mild scent. She doesn't want much scent, so I use just a little perfume. After adding all the ingredients, I will just take some of the solution and check for the pH. I don't want to add the color before I scoop it because it will distract it. I will then add color. Some people also want perfume that will be all over the place. So depending on what you want to achieve and the quantity you will use for your perfume. The quantity of color always depends on the person. So I normally don't mention it when the quantity when I'm making video. When you add the color, make sure you mix it very well so that you don't get uh, color, some colors running in it. And you know, it's always advisable to mix your color with water first before you pour it into your solution. So, you saw me scoop some of the liquid. Of the solution and then mix with I mix it with water a little bit of water so I'm going to test the pH I'm going to test the pH of it so that I will know whether I'm on the right path or not like I said the citric acid always comes in when the pH is too much so you add the citric acid to reduce it 
so let me see i've already made some of the citric acid here you know to test so this is my solution this one so i'm going to test it uh -huh. okay so as you can see it's not too too much of a ph it's okay but it's a little bit too much you know you have to check i'm looking for from three to eight or the the maximum nine is okay but as you can see i think i have 10 here so i will have to reduce it a little just a little you know to get a balanced ph and let me show you how citric acid is citric acid is extremely acidic it's so 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 acidic that's why we use to reduce ph if your solution is too alkaline you have to reduce it by adding the citric acid so i'm going to test the citric acid too for you to see see it's so red so so acidic you know purely acidic is number two and this one is no good for the skin so when it's between like seven eight nine it's okay ten not bad but if you reduce it a little it's okay but when it gets to the move and the rest that one yeah it's way 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 too much so i'll just this is what i took so i will just continue to add my citric acid you know, to reduce the acidic content I want you to know something after I added the citric acid if you can see in the video it kept rising you know citric acid is very acidic so before you use it in any of your mixture you have to check for the pH of your mixture first before you add citric acid you know some people just add it to their products without even checking whether the product needs the citric acid at that particular time or not so it's always good to check your ph the ph of your mixture first before you add the citric acid and it's always advisable to test all your ingredients to know their ph first before using it me i've done that so i know which one is more acidic and which one is less so thank you all for watching my video